Hi, in this video I'll show you how to return multiple results in a comma separated list from a lookup table. Let's say we had a lookup table here. These are room numbers and we had a bunch of names that are assigned to different room numbers. Of course, different multiple people can be assigned to the same room. You see Charles at 135 and Leia in 135. And the eventual output is we want to take a look at those rooms. We only want the rooms for 100. You notice that there's rooms for 200 here. And we want a list of names, but separated by commas for that particular room. And I'll show you two ways that we can do this. One with a function called text join, which is available in Office 365. And I believe it probably will be out in Excel 2019. And another example using Power Query. So let's go for our first example. We have our table. And then we have our lookup table here that we want to bring back the names. Let me put the name list here, names. And with Power Query, what we're going to do is use the function called text join, as I mentioned earlier. And what, what text join does is it joins up strings or content with a delimiter. So the delimiter in this case is going to be the comma. Now, the way that we could use it is just type text join. And the first argument is the delimiter. And you have to, we'll put that in quotes. And we're going to ignore empty cells. There's no empty cells here, but we can ignore empty cells. We'll just take that. And that's the default that it's going to take. For our text, it's going to be from B2 to B16. So I type from B2. And I do from B2 initially. Because what happens is, once I copy the formula down, I want to make sure that B2, this first B2 stays static. But the second B2 here increases from B2 to B3, B4, etc. So what I'm going to do is press F4. So that stays static. And close parentheses. And no, at first, nothing happens here because we haven't copied it down. So once I copy it down further, you notice it starts to join the other text. Double click it to fill that down. And you can see it's joined everything from Charles all the way down to Jaeger in the last cell here, and that's what text join does. Now, we can use this in a lookup, delete this. We can use this in a lookup to join just the names that belong to 104, and this is how we're going to do it. Type text join, and do the same thing with the delimiter. We have the comma, and true, we'll ignore it. It really doesn't matter here, but we can take the default. Here I'm going to put another function, and that's going to be the if function. If, open parentheses, if this set of values, and I'm going to put this in, I'll make this a relative cell reference range. Press F4, press F4, because once I copy that down, I don't want that cell reference frame to change. If that equals to this, then bring back the reference ranges there that match it. Also want to do F4 here, press F4, and it puts the dollar signs in front of the letter and number. If that's true, right? If it's false, then nothing. Then I close parentheses, and this is considered an array function because we're bringing back a list of values. We're not bringing back one value, right? So it's a list for both of these instances. So I need to use the keyboard combination of shift, control, enter. Oh, and I forgot to add that extra parentheses over there. Excel has been nice enough to correct it for me. I'll press yes. Double click the column to auto fit. And you'll notice everything that's associated at 104, it's brought that back. Kayla, Even, Adrian, uh, Denisha, and Jaeger. Double click the fill handle to copy that formula down. And it's brought everything over. Now, I had some extra rooms here, right? So if I added... Uh, 204, let's add an extra name. Let's call it Alice. And maybe 325, another extra name, and Paul. It doesn't really put it in here because I don't have that situated for row 17 and 18. I'll just change this here. Go to 18, go to 18, Control Shift Enter, bring that down. You can see that it hasn't picked that up because it's not included there. If I put 204, now you notice that it's picked it up. Excel is actually nice enough to bring that formula down here. 
If I delete it, it's gone. So this is one way we can do it using the text join function. Now, as I mentioned before, it's available in Office 365 and probably will be out in Excel 2019. What if you don't have Office 365 or Excel 2019? Well, you can do it in 2016 and below as long as you have Power Query. And that's going to lead us to our next example, Power Query. I'm going to copy these two last ones over so I don't have to make something up later and put it over here. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. And with Power Query, we need to turn our range of cells into tables. So I'll go to Insert Table. My table does have headers. Let's call this uh, List and make this a table. Insert Table. My table does have headers. And I'll just call this uh, Lookup. Now I'm going to bring both of these tables into the Power Query editor. Go to Data from Table and Range. So it's brought it in. It's even brought in the name of the table. Close and load. And I'll select Close and load and have it as a connection only. Uh, let's see. Hopefully that window comes up. Yep. And I only want to create a connection because I don't want it to load it as a table into a new worksheet. That's what it's going to do by default. Click OK. And you can see that it's a connection only query. Same thing for this table here, my list table. Data from table and range. And pull this. it's pulled in with the name. Click close and load. And I'm going to load to a connection only. Click OK. And I've got my list. And what I want to do is I just want to bring lookups for the values that are for 104 and the names for 104, 135, 111. So I'm going to take a reference of that. Right click, reference, and it's going to reference the output of, whoops, not that one. Let's cancel that. Discard. So I'm going to take a reference of this lookup table, which is that table. Right, you can see if I hover over it, this is the table that I need to reference. Right click, reference. And what I need to do is bring in the other table, I merge the other table. So click Merge, Merge Queries, and we're going to merge the other table, which is called the lookup table. Whoops, not the lookup table, we're going to merge the list table. And the common values are the room numbers, right? So I click that and that, click OK. And now you can see that it's brought in a list column and it has table here. So if I click on one of the cells here, you notice that it's brought in everything that's associated with 104. These four names, click the next one, everything associated with 135, and they're there. I need to take this table and bring it out in and just have that column out and make that a comma separated list. To do that, what we can do is add a column and create a custom column. This is going to be my list column. I'll probably name it something else later on. And the function, the M code function, is going to be table dot column. So because we, we want just one column from that particular list. Whoops, let me cancel this. I want there's one thing I need to look at. I want to remember what my name is. Oh, it's name. So I'll have that handy there. Again, under add column, custom column, ta table dot column, open parentheses. The, the available column is the list, right? Click on that, and from that list column, which has a table, I want to pull out that particular name column. I have to put that in parentheses now. Close quotes, click OK. There's another column here, and now it's a list. It's not a table. So this is the table. It's got the headers and the two the values for each record. This is a list. It's just got Kayla, Evelyn, Adrian, and Dinesh. I can expand this list now. This is what I would do. Click on those double headed arrows, click extract values, and it says what kind of delimiter do you want to use? Well, I'm going to use a comma. Click OK. And now we have our list. I don't need this column anymore. Right click, remove, and everything's the way I want it. Go to home, click close and load. 
Now we don't have to let, click close and load too to select how we want to edit it. By default, when you have Power Query, it will close and load and create a new worksheet. Hmm. Let's put this on our existing worksheet actually. We'll click do it as a table, but we want to have it on our existing worksheet. So click on that radio button and select here. Click OK. And now we have our lookup. We look up 104, 135, 111, 132, and the names that associate with it. The nice thing about having Power Query is if you edit it something, maybe you wanted to include 204. I can go in that, that particular table, press tab, type 204, press enter, and go under data, refresh all, and now you've noticed it's put it in there. Same thing if I put Paul, 325, click data, refresh all, Paul will show up. If I delete those two, refresh all, they get deleted. Let's move this re resize this table back up so it ends at D5. Refresh all, and that's gone. So that's the beauty of having Power Query do it for you. Now I could also have done uh, set tables up in the first example here. I could set the tables up, it would automatically adjust as we add records or remove records. So that's the nice thing about tables. I didn't use tables here in this particular example. But so there you go. There's our two examples of how you can return multiple results in a comma separate list for lookups. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.